Hello everyone, I'm Babla Jonathan and this is the 6 p.m. primetime newscast on Equinox Television live from my headquarters in Cameroon's economic capital Douala. In our top stories in this edition of the news on Equinox Television, a palace is set ablaze in the Mongo Division littoral region of the Republic of Cameroon. The palace of the traditional leader of Mundek, a locality in Mombo subdivision in the Mongo Division close to the border with crisis hit southwest region of Cameroon was set ablaze and inhabitants are suspecting an arson attack. Also in this newscast, we'll talk about the governor of the southwest region and traditional rulers who are galvanizing support for the intermediate lions of Cameroon ahead of the quarterfinal game against the Atlas Lions of Morocco in the ongoing African Nations Championship 2020 edition. Stay with us. We begin this newscast in Mundek, a locality in Mambo subdivision in the Mongo Division littoral region of the Republic of Cameroon, where inhabitants are suspecting an arson attack on the palace of the locality. The palace was raised by wild flames, and reports indicate that the palace was burnt down on the Sunday night, breaking Monday, in the absence of the traditional ruler of. Of, uh, Mundek in that part of the Mongo division of the littoral region of the Republic of Cameroon. It should be noted that this locality is close to the border with crisis hit southwest region of the Republic of Cameroon. This is why inhabitants are suspecting an arson attack on the palace of the uh, traditional ruler. The chief of the village traveled to Mbanga and was only informed on phone that his palace has been brought down by wild flames. The real cause or the exact cause of the inferno is yet to be clearly established. Now we're going to talk about the problem of uh, birth certificates. Thousands of children in the Republic of Cameroon in big cities, but more so in the hinterlands, are still without the important document, the birth certificates. And experts and government authorities are blaming this situation on negligence and ignorance, ignorance on the path of parents. And of course, we are taking you to one of the localities in the Sanaga Maritime Division where this problem is acute. Charles Ekome reports. Faced with multiple challenges, the mayor of the Ngwe community in Makondo, Sanaga Maritime Division of the Littoral Region, is on the verge of trying to solve an aging problem of lack of birth certificates within his community. Together with the service in charge of issuing and monitoring birth certificates for the Littoral Region, Brunek, and the Women's Peace Initiative Group, these entities have embarked on a quest to solving this issue by addressing the problem at the Makondo Makondo Community Hall in the presence of the Divisional Officer for Makondo, traditional rulers and elites of the community. We think that there is a great part of the population who have lost their birth certificates. Many people in the community didn't get to issue these documents out of ignorance, whereas birth certificates, death certificates and even marriage certificates are important documents for all citizens. The mayor of Ngwe, Mathieu Agbe, says they are relentlessly working on solving this problem. We want that every citizen who is born is issued a birth certificate. Those who are getting married can have marriage certificates and the deceased can have death certificates. Apart from the problems of lack of birth certificates in the Gwei community, the mayor also pointed out other problems which the community faces on a daily basis. 
on a pas de route, mais vous avez vu qu'en matière de route, euh, un effort... We don't have roads. You can see the governor even made an effort to grade part of the road. And we are grateful for that. We don't have electricity and portable water is still a problem in our community. With the presence of Brunek and the Women's Peace Initiative Group, which are the masterminds in solving such problems, the community of Ngwe in Makondo are desperately awaiting the implementation process for the issuing of birth certificates within their community. In the report coming up next, we're going to talk about the impact of COVID-19 on socio-economic endeavors of young people in the Republic of Cameroon. Many of them have suffered the adverse consequences of the coronavirus pandemic and the United Nations Development Program. The UNDP is now coming in to help the young people recover and, of course, uh, take up their uh, businesses to another level with the aid they are giving giving them some of them, 300 of them, received diverse aid from the uh, United Nations Development Program today here in Cameroon's economic capital, Douala. Makulet Fogwe has more. The coronavirus pandemic has frustrated, aborted, and crumbled civil business ventures in Cameroon. Many young people in particular engage in socio-economic activities met with the COVID-19 stumbling block which compelled them to either progress at a slow pace, stagnate or move back. I am involved in the breeding of chicken and selling and uh, the COVID-19 period was a very difficult period for us because uh, first of all having primary material was a problem and then secondly we had a problem with transportation of our chicken to the market. I'm transforming agricultural products. My project actually is uh, drying our fruits, transforming them into fruit powder for baby pap. Because of the impact of COVID-19, I actually was not able to launch my company. Because I first of all lose the job I was doing. I was teaching, so I lose that. And uh, I didn't have funds and even the space to be able to uh, start transforming. And also, I didn't have the equipment due to lack of funds. An evaluation by the United Nations Development Program shows that the consequences of the coronavirus are far-reaching. They were very, very affected, actually, and it's still going on. Affected by the COVID, as I said, the impact was a, a, around their productivities. A lot of them were not able to produce, and even those who were able to produce, because of the, the closing of the border, some of them were not, were not able to send out their products, to go to the market, or even, even to go to, with a neighboring country to sell it. So at the end of the day, the impact was first on the production, but on the transformation, on the commercialization. The evaluation was done within the framework of the United Nations Development Aid Project with the aim of mitigating the damaging socio-economic impact of the coronavirus. The first phase of the project is worth over 500 million CFA francs invested in trading and the purchase of equipment being handed over to the beneficiaries in Douala Tuesday. Those equipments uh, are related to the agricultural sector, agribusiness sector, our support from UNDP is on three segments of devaluation, production, transformation and commercialization. We've been given a tree cycle which will help us go down to the market, go down to the field, wherever we purchase. For example, in the Bumbari, in Suza, we purchase chickens from there to carry to Douala in order to sell. So the tricycle that has been given to us will really help us. With the help of the UNDP, I benefited from a dehydrating machine and a sealing machine. It's the principal equipment for my company, but it's not yet enough. Meantime, these young people are still expecting financial and order incentives from government and its partners to boost their impact in health, job creation and nation building. Immaculate Fogo reporting there now in sports ahead of the semi final game beating the intermediate lines of Cameroon and the Atlas lines of Morocco. The intermediate lines are already in the town of Limbe, southwest region of the Republic of Cameroon, and they had their first training session yesterday in the Limbe in preparation for that encounter which according to sports analysts is going to be a 
tough game concerning uh, considering the strength and the capacity of the Atlas lines of uh, uh, Morocco who have demonstrated the power throughout the competition from the uh, group stage through the quarterfinals right up to this level where they will be confronting the intermediate lines of Cameroon. In the meantime, supporters of the intermediate lines of Cameroon are confident that they will be able to push through to the final stage of the competition. But there are lots of question marks as far as the um, capacity to bring down the Atlas lines of Morocco. The semi-finals is concerned with regards to some flaws identified at the level of the attack line, which seems not to be very efficient in terms of scoring goals. And of course, they had their first training session last evening in the town of uh, Limbe and the governor of the southwest region and some traditional rulers have been galvanizing support for the intermediate lines of Cameroon and even the Minister of Sports, Professor Nasis Mwelekombi, went to visit the intermediate lines of Cameroon in order to encourage them, to strengthen them, uh, to give them a tap on the back in order to ensure that they grab a victory, they grab victory against the Atlas lines of Morocco. And now, after that uh, meeting, the governor of the southwest region, Benau Kalia Bilai, spoke to us. Take a listen. The meeting uh, falls in uh, our prerogatives of uh, chairman, president of uh, the Boya, in the site. We are receiving the lambs, so we need to make sure that everything is okay. So all the stakeholders were invited, and uh, we are reassured because all of them declare that they are ready, that everything is in order, and that uh, the encounter of tomorrow will take place in a serene atmosphere in peace. And uh, we want to reassure all the public, those who are coming out of the region, to come in peace and serenity, to come and sustain the lands and sustain the effort of their brother and sister of this region, who are coming from where you know. And uh, their efforts need to be uh, supported. Because if people continue to hesitate to come, it is like if we are not doing enough to bring peace and order. Peace and order are there, let our brothers and sisters come to enjoy, to enjoy it, and to do as they used to do in the past, I mean, to keep in their mind that Boya and Limbe is a political decision. What measures will we put in Southwest Governor Benau Kalia Bilai speaking the he and the Minister of Sports Professor Nazis Mole can be had a meeting with the intermediate lines of Cameroon behind closed doors and they wants to encourage the intermediate lines to uh, push through against the Atlas lines of Morocco in the quarterfinals of the ongoing 2020 African Nations Championship. Coming up, Manji and Gabriel previews the quarterfinals. It will be a clash between Lions at the Ngeme Sports Stadium on Wednesday. On one side, the Intermediate Lions of Cameroon, who are in their fourth appearance at the African Nations Championship with just one semi-final appearance, will have much to do when they take on defending champions, the Atlas Lions of Morocco, who are also in their fourth participation at the African Nations Championship, but their second semi-finals after that of 2018 when they hosted. If Cameroon has an upper hand with the senior team picking as many as seven wins, four draw and one game lost in all competition against the senior team of Morocco, the intermediate Lions are yet to beat Morocco at this level of the competition as they are meeting for the first time. 
As it stands, Cameroon has scored four goals, conceding two in the entire tournament, while Morocco has scored nine, conceding three. Before the semi-final clash between Cameroon and Morocco, no injuries or coronavirus cases have been recorded in both camps. While Cameroon is yet to have an identified striker, the defense of the intermediate Lions must be very careful of players like El Kaabi and Sufyan Rahimi of Morocco. The other semi-final game will be a duel of two giant West African countries, Guinea and Mali. Both countries will be at their second semi-finals in the history of the African Nations Championship in their third participation at the competition. If Mali struggled in front of goals at the group stage and knockout stage of the competition, Guinea was very prolific, scoring seven goals. Molai Salah will be the man to watch for Guinea. A win for Guinea and Cameroon in the semi-finals will be a record created as it will be the first time these countries will be qualifying for the finals of the African Nations Championship, dubbed Shan. A preview of the semi-finals of the ongoing 2020 African Nations Championship by sportsman Smart Jikan Gabriel. And we're still with you, Smart, and this time around you're going to be uh, talking about statistics. You're presenting some vital figures as far as this edition of the African Nations Championship is concerned. A total of 28 matches have been played this far as teams await for the last four stage of the competition. Out of 28 matches played, 54 goals have been scored, giving us an average of 1.93 goals scored per match. Five of the goals were scored from penalty spot, four of them at the group stage and one during the quarterfinals, while two own goals have also been recorded in the course of the competition. Ten matches ended in draw, with five of them ending goalless. Voted as man of the match in three different games, Sili Nationals Molai Sila, 22-year-old, is topping the goal chart with four goals to his credit. The referees have this far dished out 110 yellow cards, 91 of them during the group stage and 19 at the level of the quarterfinals. The first red cards of the tournament were seen at the quarterfinals. Zambia's Zakaria Chilongosi was the first to be given a matching order out of the pitch by the referee. And Guinea's Mori Kante became the second player during the game against Rwanda. Another player with a red card is Olivier Kuizara of Rwanda, who was the third to be given a red card. As the semi-finals comes up on Wednesday, more records are expected to be created. Thank you, Smart Jik and Gabriel. Stay with us for Talking Point in some few seconds. Today we are receiving a young agripreneur, known uh, agripreneur of course, uh, referring to experts in agriculture, agriculture, and of course uh, she is also and uh, a mechatronic engineer. Thank you, Nguyo Dorian, for joining us today. All right, now we're going to be talking about agriculture. Agriculture in this edition of the uh, Primetime Newscast on Equinox Television. You are a mechatronic engineer, an engineer in mechanical, electrical, and information and communication uh, technology. How did you find yourself in agriculture? How did you become an agripreneur? Thank you for the question. Actually, I grew up in agriculture. 
I started doing agriculture right at the age of five because I grew up in the West region. So right uh, when we were still young, our mother used to go with us in the farm. So I have that in my blood. But given the fact that the agriculture we were doing when we were very young was so strenuous, so while growing up, I asked myself, how can I, as a young Cameroonian, as a young lady, transform this agriculture into higher heights? So while growing up, I came to find out mechanized agriculture, how to use mechanics, ICT, electronics, in order to boost agriculture by system automation. Thank you. Mm. So um, even though you are um, specialized in the field of um, mechanical, electrical, and information and communication technologies, you, you, you're involved in um, agricultural transformation. What exactly are you doing? Okay. In agricultural transformation, first of all, I'm doing drying of fruit. That's, I'm transforming fruit into fruit chips and fruit powder for baby pack. So what really led me into that sector is because Cameroon today produces close to 845,000 tons of fruits and vegetables, but more than 50% of that really get rotten in the cost of transportation during, uh, in the farm and even in marketplaces. So for us to really help to curb that um, wastage, I asked myself, what can I do? So I saw that what I have close to me is transforming by drawing of these fruits. So that's what really led me into that sector. Now how did you start? You know, there are many young people today who are listening to you, and uh, many of them are not interested in agriculture. Many of them are interested in white collar jobs, you know, offices, uh, looking good all the time, and so on. But you're involved in um, agricultural transformation. How did you start? How did you get there? Okay, so I'll, first of all, I like that I'm into the initiating stage, but what really led me into this domain, as I said, is yes, it's good to want to look good, but actually the real riches is in the farm, that's in agriculture. But now, since young people want to look good, as you said, want to be in offices, so what we can do is to really help this youth to be, to work in a very good environment with the help of mechanizing their, um, their equipment, what they are using. Because when we talk about agriculture in Cameroon most of the time, we see a young woman or a young man in the farm with the kettlers. So youths don't want that. Hose yeah. and crude tools in general. Yeah, and most of youths they don't want that anymore. Since you are really going, you are really uh, into the modern world. So now that's actually why many youths, for my my part, I think that's why many youths are running away from agriculture. But I think if us maybe uh, youths and with the help of the government, we can help these youths training them. I think the government is doing that, but we can really put an accent more on that by helping, yes, this is the problem. Now, what is the solution? Because telling, uh, telling youths, yes, go to the farm, but we know that they don't want. But actually, they don't want because they don't, they don't want to be doing the agriculture that are using crude tools. Now, what we, how the way we can position ourselves is to say that, okay, since you don't want to look nasty, we can help you to do agriculture while looking good. Doing agriculture while looking good, that's quite interesting there. But is there not an issue of mindset? Is there not an issue of mindset that should be uh, somehow transformed? Because uh, everything starts from there. If you don't get it in your mind, if you don't get it in your soul, in your spirit to do something, uh, probably even if they give you uh, machines, they give you millions of francs a year, you may end up squandering it. Yeah, of course. As you rightly said, the mindset is very, very, very important in everything we do because we always have challenges. Challenges not only at the level of Cameroon, everywhere we have challenges. But the issue is to tell yourself, okay, this is where I am. No matter where you are, you can be in the village, you can be in town. This is what, what, what I have, where I am. 
given the fact that maybe I'm not from a rich family, I'm from a, from a poor family. Now, you know that maybe you're at point one or point zero or even point minus five. Okay, you ask yourself, how do you get there? Because if you are so fast, you want to quickly succeed, it's going to be problematic. So it's also a way of planning. You plan every stage of your life. You say, okay, right now I'm here. This is where I want to get to. And then you find a way to get where you want to get to. Because nothing is easy and nothing is impossible. That's what I think. Nothing is easy. Nothing is impossible. You know, this uh, very, very important thing to have at the back of the mind. Nothing is easy. Nothing is impossible now uh, looking at uh, the way uh, things are being done in Cameroon today as far as agriculture is concerned uh, where is the major problem with uh, the agricultural sector of the country which seems to be pending to produce uh, to the extent uh, that it can really provoke some kind of transformation okay for my part I think the problem we have right now is um, problem of infrastructure that's roots and uh, because even the little that's present for now that youths are able to do they have from because most of these pr product get perished in the ma in the farm so for me I think the real problem now because even before entering into the part of mechanizing we first of all have to uh, uh, see how to really exploit at uh, very well what we have so as i said for me the problem is roots we don't have enough roots to transport our uh, fruit product our products to the market it should be roots uh, and then um besides the fact that uh, the coronavirus came with its own consequences on some of you young people who were involved in uh, agriculture or other economic activities what are the other challenges that uh, you face in trying to develop or establish an agro industry and of course employ other people working with you okay what i must really admit is that as i said nothing is easy because first of all to really see you an enterprise yes you have the idea is good but how do you get there there's a problem of you have to formalize your enterprise, you have to buy equipment, you have to also look for You have to where, get legal documents. Yeah, legal document. You have to look for where to establish your company. All this actually is not easy for a young lady, for a young man. In Like as I said, if you are starting from minus 20 and you have that dream, so it's really a problem. But for me, as I said, I know that this is where I want to get to. This is where I am. If not, I won't have applied for the program of the UNDP. Because when you know where you're getting to, where you know where you want to get to, every opportunity, you just, you just snatch it. You snatch it for sure. So as I'm growing, I know that, yes, I don't have enough fun. But every opportunity I found, I find around, around me, I just make sure that I snatch it to realize my dream. Before the helping hand of the United Nations Development Program uh, came to you today, uh, you had serious challenges with the COVID-19. You had a big blow with the COVID-19 as far as your company is concerned. Can you tell us more about that? Okay, uh, before the COVID-19, we were already about to launch the company. But when the COVID-19 came, we were really off because most of the funds we had just when uh, I had a cousin that I really had coronavirus. So we had to really deal on that first before thinking about company. So in the circumstances like that, you don't think more about company, about money. You think about health, you think about life. So just that psychological trauma was already um, a way to really bring us down during this uh, period. And of course, the um, coronavirus also took away your job. Yes, as I said before that I was teaching, so I could not, since most of students were at home, so I could not teach anymore. I had no money, so I could not really think about continuing with my project. So everything was just silent. Of I just had to stay in the house, look at YouTube videos, still in agriculture, but really as action, I could not do anything during that period. 
you were among the 300 young people who received aid from the United Nations Development Program today. Uh, tell us a little more about what you receive and how it's going to help in uh, the development of your company. Okay, actually, as, uh, I, as we said, in the beginning we were 6,000 young Cameroonians. That's really to say that Cameroonian youths, we really need help. Uh, 6,000? Yeah, 6,000. But we were 500 of us retained. We were trained for three weeks. That's on marketing, branding, packaging, um, all, all that. And uh, at the end of that, 300 project that's 300 Cameroonians, young Cameroonians were selected, which I had the privilege to be among. And uh, what I benefited from was a dehydrating machine, because that's the key uh, equipment for my company. Mm. How will it help in the um, revamping of your company? Okay, actually, for my company, the dehydrating machine was the uh, was the equipment that really needed much capital. So it's already a very, very big boost for me because the other equipment, I can already have them by myself. So this was a great boost. And uh, I will seize the opportunity to really say thanks to the UNDP program in Cameroon. And uh, that's just it. All right. Um, now let's talk something else. You are a mechatronic engineer. Yeah. How did you, um, what brought you into that domain? How did you get inspired oh, to get into that domain? And you have gone right up to the master's level and you're not teaching uh, in some higher institutions of learning. Okay, as I rightly said, <laughs> I grew up in agriculture. And while growing up, I was asking myself, how can I use what I know, because I'm one of those youths that do not really love going into the farm using crude uh, equipment, and at the end of the day, the the, the harvest is the harvest is not really it. It's really not it at all. So, and in my research, because I did science, I did physics. In my research, I saw that. Um, um, we could use technology to really boost agriculture. And the best of it was mechatronics, that's automating of systems. Because what I did was embedded electronic systems. So that's really what brought me into <laughs> this field, actually. Mm. And y y you are uh, now a teacher? Yes, can you tell us um, more about your teaching activity as far as uh, mechatronic engineering is concerned? Okay, actually I'm teaching right now in the higher institute of Girl of the Guinea. I'm teaching software engineering students. That's a, still a branch of mechatronics. As I said, it's a vast and very wonderful domain. So right now I teach uh, HND students uh, in um, software engineering in networking. And uh, it's doing off period because I, what I really love about this teaching is that after teaching the students, you you are just like a, a boost to their their um, to their career their and also to their dreams. Because during break, I told this, I told my students that yes, you are doing this, but if you just want to focus on these certificates, you know, Cameroon are having Cameroon is having a lot of set of certificate. So change your mindset change the way you're approaching the job market. Don't go, don't finish or don't be here uh, because you want to look for a job, but be here because you want to learn something and create a job. So that's really the best part I a love about this. job creation mentality. Yeah. Tell us some more about that, the job creation mentality. Okay, because uh, as but I... It's often said, do not be job seekers, be job providers. Yes, as I said, when you leave school, for sure you need to start somewhere. You need to apply for a job. But don't be there because you want to spend your whole life. No, be there because you want to acquire some funds. Be on your own to create something, to live your dream. Because that's just it. When you're working to realize your dream, you don't feel the pain, you don't feel the stress, you don't feel any difficulty. Difficulties are just stepping stones. So yes, when you finish school, look for a job, but be there with the mindset that you are there for a period of time to actually later on create your own job, your own dream. Well, 
thanks so much Ngweo Dorian, agripreneur, mechatronic engineer. Thank you for joining us today. Thank you very much. Thanks, ladies and gentlemen, for staying with us. That will be it for today. Equinox comes up next with Sergio Longoto.